Due to the recent changes where the TDSR actually decreases from 60% to 55%, a lot, I have a number of clients who start to text me and ask me about uh, how do I find out what is my affordability, how much should I borrow, uh, and how much can I borrow from the bank. And today I will actually do a short video to explain how my affordability calculator works. So you can actually use it and key yourself and you can actually find out how much you can actually borrow from your bank and you can and from there you can understand what is your budget. Hi, I'm James Ling, founder of the Property Plus system and today I'll be talking about how to use my affordability calculator. So first of all, you have to understand how the bank loan works. So when you want to borrow money from the bank, there are actually two things you need to understand. One is the TDSR framework, and the second one is actually the LTV. So of course, we will take the lower of the two. So first of all, for the TDSR framework, it's actually pretty simple, where you can actually uh, type in an uh, example, which I'll give you later into the, into the calculator, and then you will know how much you can borrow from the bank. Rather, the second one is actually the LTV, which is what we call the loan-to-value ratio. And the loan-to-value ratio is actually 75%. What it means is that for the, the Singapore government or MAS allows that for a, example, a 1 million property, 25% or 250,000, you, you must use cash or CPF uh, for this property. And you can actually take a maximum of 75% loan from the bank. So for example, for a 1 million property over here, the maximum you can borrow is 750,000. Even though, if you were to use your TDSR calculator, you can owe, you can take 1.5 million loan from the bank, but you still can't use all the 1.5 million. You maximum you can only use 75% bank loan. So how are we going to use uh, these two? And I shall come up with an example. First of all, let's go to my website, sglaggeriecondo.com. Okay, and from here go to my website. So what you can do is that you can actually go down, click on the tools, the second one under tools, which is affordability calculator. So this is actually the calculator that I did for my client and I have actually already changed the coding from 60% to 55%. Okay, so let me show you how do I key in all these fingers as an example. So first of all, um, if you are actually a single income, let me give you an example. Let's say uh, uh, this guy who is actually age 40. So maybe he is a pilot and a pilot, he will have two forms of income. One is what we call the gross fixed income, which you can actually look at your NOA or notice of assessment to find out what is this monthly gross income. So let's say his take home income is maybe 8,000. Okay. And he's, this is his, uh, this is what we call a variable income. Now variable incomes comes from things like commission base. And for example, for a pilot, right, sometimes uh, he has allowances. And allowances, depending on the banks, uh, sometimes it's not considered as a gross income, it is used more as a variable income. So although this word here is annual, but it is still considered monthly. So assuming, right, the company pays him a 2,000 variable income, so why this I have to separate it is that if you were to put in this 2,000 variable income, you will notice that his total income is not 10,000. Why? Because there's a 70% hairline cut to this. So therefore, just key in this, fig this, this figure. If you have a variable income that is commission-based, such as for salesperson, or maybe you know as a grab driver, they will have this type of variable income, or maybe tuition. Okay, and of course, if he is single income, you can just click on calculate. Now, let's also see that if he has a, maybe a car loan, we actually have to put in the car loan as per month. So basically, let's assume that he, he has a money car loan of $800. So this will decrease his total loan. Now, of course, you know, if, if he's a joint person who is actually buying, maybe we have a wife and maybe let's say the wife is 5000 and his income maybe is, uh, sorry, his age is 35 years old where his income is 5,000 and he doesn't have any other income. So basically we have these two scenario. We just have to click on calculate. So straight up all very quickly, you can see that with these two person, you know, after I've done my calculation, um, you will see that the, sorry, this is still an error which I never changed, but the coding is correct. is 55% TDSR limit. So the total maximum loan you can borrow is 27 years. While the maximum loan amount you can actually borrow is 1.49 million. So using this example, let's assume that, uh, you know, although he can take close to 1.5 million property, if he were to buy a 2 million property, 
Okay, seventy five percent of two million will be roughly around one point five. This is the maximum amount of loan that he can actually take. However, if he is only looking at a one point five million property, you know, and if since the LTV is only seventy five percent, maximum loan he can only take one point two million. Although he the maximum he can borrow from the bank is one point four nine. So that is how it works. If you have any questions, just feel free to send me a text or comment in the in the in the section below. And um, if you like this video, give a smash the like button. And I hope to hear from you soon. Uh, do subscribe to our channel for future videos. Thank you so long and bye.